resource gathering. Though not as sexy as other topics such as PvP or battlefields, is an essential component of your Evony gameplay. In this video, we're going to go through everything that you need to know about resource gathering. This is a masterclass that will cover everything from gathering generals, the types of books you should put on your generals, what type of gear you should have on your generals. We'll also cover tile mechanics. We will break down each level of gathering expertise. And at the end of the video, provide tips for each level on how to improve and step up your gathering game. So be sure to stick around for that. Hi, and welcome to Red Ebony. I will be your lecturer for this graduate course for your time at our fine institution here. My name is Akayasha, affectionately known as Aka. So let's dive in. now. We're going to quickly go over the basics now. When you go to the world map, you'll find that the world map is populated with gathering tiles. These are the tiles that you will go to gather resources to fuel the development of your city and the development of your troops. The gathering tiles have different levels, starting from level 1 and going all the way up to level 15. Tap on the tile to see the amount of resources in there. Level 1 has 40,000 resources, level 2 has 100,000 resources, level 3 has... Aka, wake up. Oh, sorry about that. Let's move on. In my opinion, we have three main levels of gathering expertise. Beginner, that would be anyone under Keep 24. At this level, your development is still underway, your march size isn't very big, your troop count isn't very high, and most importantly, level of tiles that you can comfortably gather is still relatively low. So anyone K24 and under is, will be considered a beginner level for these purposes. Intermediate, that is basically anyone that can comfortably gather from tiles up to level 12. Then we have the advanced, which is basically anyone that can comfortably gather from tiles level 13 and higher and has at least one queen jindiok for those who don't know we will cover who queen jindiok is later on these are basically the three levels of classification now question what level do you currently fall into think about that and keep that in mind because it will guide the way you frame the rest of the information in this video going forward Let's move on. Next up, we'll be looking at gathering generals. Now, Ebony, to their credit, a few months back, released a number of new gathering generals, which various levels of players can use for their gathering game. For the purposes here, we are going to be covering the main ones, which are the historic generals that you can find easily in the tavern. We start off here in Europe. This is our first gathering general that we're going to look at. Gaius Marius increases all gathering speed by 30% and also increases lumber and stone gathering speed by 15%. Next up, Constance brings back an extra 20% of resources from gathering and increases troop load by 20% as well. Next up, we go to Japan. Shimazu Yoshihiro brings back an extra 30% from gathering food. So he's a food specific general and also increases resource gathering speed by 10%. We come all the way over here. Next general, we'll look at Princess Lucy. Increases resource gathering speed by 15%. And finally, we come to Korea, where we have the wonderful, the magnificent Queen Jindiok. Brings back a whopping 40% of resources after gathering and an extra 20% when gathering from the Alliance tile. A lot of you might have been playing the game, but for anyone that doesn't know, Queen Jindiok has been and currently still is the best gathering general in this game, period. Now, a general rule of thumb is that 
you want at least one gathering general for each march slot that you have so get as many of them as you can because they will significantly help your gathering game what books should you have on your gathering general and i'm going to quickly go to my princess lucy there she is go to books and then we go to level one because that's where we'll start with right these are four books that you should be looking to put on any of your gathering generals fruit gatherer lumber gatherer stone gatherer or gatherer my recommendation is you have some combination of these books on your gathering generals i have wood stone and ore on all of my gathering generals those three books now you can look at other books such as troop load or march size increase for your gathering general i wouldn't really recommend that especially since by the time you move along on the rest of your overall development the value those books essentially become redundant so i would say once again to focus on these four books for your gathering general now let's look at monarch gear there are two types of monarch gear that you need to look at when it comes to gathering first up we go to the horns out of the four there are only two that you really need to look at you need to look at the march size capacity horn and you need to look at the troop load horn the march size capacity horn increases your march size so you can send more troops out to gather in case your normal march size isn't enough the troop load horn if your march size is enough you use the troop load to reduce the amount of troops that you can send out these are essentially the two horns that you're going to be using for gathering next up we're going to look at the crystals and you want to look at the bottom four these crystals essentially give you a boost to your gathering speed so you would want to have those on when you are sending out troops to the various tiles let's go over tile mechanics let's go back to the world map let's see i'm going to port over here real quick for tile mechanics there are three phases that you need to keep in mind one when the troops are going into the tile two when the troops are in the tile and then three when the troops are coming out of the tile knowing how the tile works at each of those three phases is very important first off before the troops get in the tile everything that relates to gathering speed or to troop load must be set before the troops enter the tile what exactly are we talking about here? We're talking about the horns. Your horns need to be set properly before the troops enter the tile, not when you send the march out, before the troops get into the tile. So you can send the march out, change your horns or your crystals before they get into the tile. We had a stone tile there, we can put stone on, fine. In addition, everything for gathering speed needs to be set before the troops get into the tile so we are talking about your gathering buff for example if you're just going to be gathering you can set an eight hour buff if you're going to be gathering for the whole day you can set a 24 hour buff on and you know that you're good for the rest of the day so that's fine but make sure that you have a buff on before the troops get into the tile it is very important to remember that set your troop buffs the monarch gear before the troops go into the town we've talked about the monarch gear here that also includes the gear on your general we will cover that a bit later when the troops are in the tile the only thing that can have an impact on them is the gathering buff that you have you need to make sure that the gathering buff that you have is enough to cover the duration of gathering if for example the remaining time on your gathering buff is not long enough to cover the time for your gatherers and you think let me put on a fresh buff so that it covers for that time you can do that what happens is that it takes away 
from some of the duration of time that you had on your on your tile. Make sure that before your troops go in, the duration on your gathering buff is long enough to cover the duration of the gather of the gathering in the tile. Finally, when the troops are coming out of the tile, everything that relates to gathering bonus, that is the extra resources that you could possibly pull from the tile, gets set at the point the troops are coming out of the tile. It is very important to remember those three things because we're going to reference them later on in the video. All right, that covers the world tiles. Next thing that we're going to look at, we're going to look at the alliance tile. So I'm going to quickly pull my troops out and head back to my alliance so that we can have a look at that. Now, for all intents and purposes, the alliance tile operates pretty much similar to the world tile. Same procedure. Make sure that your mona gear is set. Since we have a food tile on there, switch it to food. Make sure that your buffs are set. That will, that will influence. And then you send your troops in. Okay. It's as simple as that. The same thing, the same mechanics apply when the troops, when the troops are going in. The only difference for the alliance style, however, is that when the troops are in there, that's it. The situation that we showed with gathering, with the gathering buff does not apply for the alliance style. All you need to do is to make sure that you have some time, whether it's five minutes, whether it's one minute, you just need to make sure that your gathering buff is on at the time you send it into the town. If the gathering buff expires while the troops are still in the town, that's absolutely no problem. Same thing again, bonuses, gathering bonuses are set when the troops are coming out of the town. There's absolutely no problem there. Next up, let's look at what type of gear you should be putting on your generals. I'll just go into my general list very quickly. Now, there are essentially three types of gear that you should be looking to have on your gathering generals. The first one, champion's gear. This is a very low level gear that was released. It's not very high up on the gear ranking. However, the gear set does have attributes that are very essential to your gathering game. You get 10% extra resources when you have four pieces of champion's gear on your general. Champion's gear is very good for people that are just starting out, the beginner level, even intermediate level as well. But for the set attributes, even advanced level players will be looking to get some champion's gear. Next up, king's gear. I cannot stress this enough, but this is the main type of gear that you should be looking to have for your gathering generals. Two reasons for that. One is that King's Gear have built-in gathering speed attributes. And those attributes are the highest in the game. You will not find gear with native attributes for gathering speed higher than what you have for King's. Let's have a look at this axe here. It has siege attack, it has increasing construction speed, it has range through defense, but you see the second one there, it has lumber gathering speed. That is why King's gear is so essential for the native boost to your gathering speed. What you wanna do for each general is you wanna match the, the King's gear so that it applies to the type of resource that you're gathering. So looking at my Queen Jindiok here again, we have the axe that has lumber gathering speed. We have the armor piece, which also has lumber gathering speed. And we have the leg armor piece, which also has lumber gathering speed. You can do the same for food. You can do the same for stone. You can do the same for ore. Select the pieces that have those attributes and then Put them on the general when you're going to be sending them out to the town. The last gear set that you need to look at when it comes to gathering is dragon's gear. Now, dragon's gear, unlike king's gear, does not have native attributes for gathering. 
What it does have though is it has set attributes. So when you have two pieces, you get the gathering speed bonus of 15%. Next up, we're going to be looking at research. What kind of tech should you be looking to do to up your gathering game? We get to the advancement tab. And these are the very first things that you want to get done for your gathering research. And then you move down, you have advanced foraging. Moving down, logging, furnace, courier. These are the sets of research that you want to be doing to improve your gathering speed. Other things that you want to look at in this line Advanced logistics, which increases your troop load. Obviously, troop load means that your troops can carry more resources, so you need less troops for the same amount of resource. And that pretty much covers it for the research that you have to do in the Advancement tab for your World Tile Gathering. We go to the Alliance tab to look at research for gathering on your Alliance tile. Here we have Alliance Lumbering. You want to make sure that you get these up. In addition, you also have Alliance Bonuses. So these bonuses allow you to gather extra resources from the Alliance tiles. And you can see here, once you've mastered it, you get an extra 40% resources from the Alliance tile, which is awesome. Moving down, you have more Alliance lumbering, and these are for gathering speed in the tiles. These are a bit more expensive than the tech in the Advancement tab. So you might want to take your time with these, but when you can, you want to try and get these up as high as you possibly can. Now that we've covered the research that you need to do for the world map gathering, and the Alliance styles. Let's go and have a look at Monarch Talents. These are your Monarch Talents here. The first one is here, Resources Production. Boost in-city resource production on the cost of reducing gathering speed. Since the focus that we're looking at is gathering, you want this talent off. You do not need this talent if your focus is gathering. So keep that in mind. As we go down to here, we have troop load. This increases your overall troop load. So this would be a good talent to have maxed out if you're focusing on gathering. However, there's a caveat to this. This talent is on the same level as healing cost. And depending on the way you play your game, you might want healing costs as opposed to troop load. However, you have presets. You can have one preset which is set for gathering and you have troop load on there so you can switch when it's time for you to gather if that is something that you can fit into your play. Finally, we have gathering boost. And this is the most important talent in this entire tree. If you're focusing on gathering, you must, once you get the ability to, you must have this talent on. Now that we've finished with the talents, let's go on to one final piece, subsidies. Subsidies are also another way to boost your gathering game. The kind of subsidies that you want, you want to be looking at Korean subsidies. And this is the buff here, main warehouse city capacity 30%, which we now we're not really bothered with. The one that we are really concerned with is extra resources from gathering. Korean subsidies boost the amount of resources that you get from tile. So the more Korean subsidies you have, the more boost you would have to your gathering tile. 
Now that we have covered all of these aspects, we want to look at what kind of tips will be valuable for you to improve your gathering game. We're going to have these tips into two sections. One will focus on gathering output and the other will focus on gathering speed. For your gathering output, you have three components in there. You need to make sure that your monarch talents are right and they are doing what you need them to do. So you have gathering boost on. You need that if you want to improve your gathering output. The next thing is your general. What type of general do you want? So if you have a general that gives you a extra resources gathering boost, you want that. If you have gear, like the champion's gear on there, that will give you an extra boost as well. Finally, you have subsidies. Like we just explained, Korean subsidies are invaluable when it comes to increasing your gathering output. For gathering speed, you want to focus on research, the research trees that we showed in the advancement and also in the alliance section. And you want to focus on your generals. So you want to make sure that they have the right type of gear and that they are leveled and cultivated properly. Now, here are the tips and recommendations for each level of gathering expertise. Starting with beginner, you want to focus on your overall development. So you want to focus on increasing your keep level. You want to focus on raising your rally spot level and so people might not know this, but you want to focus on increasing your warehouse level. It's because your warehouse level has a cap on the amount of resources that you can pull from the world tiles. I'll just show you what it is right here. So if you go to your main screen, you can see right there, gathering warehouse capacity. I have mine at 100 billion, meaning that I can pull up to a hundred billion resources from the world map. Now, naturally, I'm probably never going to be able to do that. But if I did get up to a hundred billion, I would not be able to gather any more from the world map until I use up those resources and create more, more buffer for me to gather more. When you are at lower levels, especially if you haven't upgraded your warehouse, this number will be significantly lower. Most people increase the level of their warehouse as a prerequisite for other things, such as the pasture. So they increase the level of their warehouse in that process, and they never really notice this. It's never really a problem for them, but it is something, particularly at the beginner level, that you have to keep in mind. In addition, you also want to get those early stages of research done. You want to be able to make sure that you move down that research tree as much as possible. You also want to focus on your troops, your troop count, uh, how many troops that you have. You want to focus on low level troops, T1 troops, T2 troops for your gathering. Why is that? It's because one, those troops are relatively inexpensive to build. Two, the troop upkeep for those troops is relatively very low. So you don't have to worry about them eating up your food. And then three, if it ever gets to a situation where there are problems on your server and there's tiling going on, uh, basically people attacking you when, you're, when your tiles are out and gathering, because you're using low level troops, the repair cost and the healing cost of those troops will be significantly low. That would be my recommendation. You particularly want to look at level one and level two siege, level one and level two ground troops. So at the beginner stage, those are the kind of troops that you'd be looking to build for your gathering. For the intermediate level, you want to be looking at your overall development again. You want to be raising your keep level. You want to be raising your troop count. You want to be raising your march slots if you haven't done that already. You also want to be looking at getting better generals for your gathering. 
So making sure that you have actual gathering journals for all of your marches. You want to be looking at getting better gear for your generals. So if let's say you're moving from a beginner level and you only had champions gear, you really want to start looking at getting that king's gear sorted. And you want to try and have the requisite types for each of your gathering generals. I'll just show you quickly what it looks like. Here is a general setup for gathering with for food, wood, stone, or only king's gear. These are the kind of setups that you want to have for your generals with king's gear. You also want to start putting or having in mind getting your first queen jindiok because that is something that's really going to push you up to the next level. Finally, for the advanced level gatherers, we need to focus on getting more queen jindioks. That's the first thing. If you have five marches, or maybe you have six at this point in time, I don't know, but you need to make sure that you have as many Queen Jindioks as you have marches. You can even get more. You can get five, six, seven. You can give them out to your friends if you like. Okay, I know you actually can't do that, but I'm trying to drive a point here. You need as many Queen Jindioks as you have marches. At this point in time, you also want to in look at improving your gathering on the Alliance tile. It is very important, particularly for advanced level players. Once you're at that stage, you might notice that you are getting a bit more preoccupied with killing bosses and doing other things. So you need your March slots vacant. You can't have them on tiles all the time. In that kind of scenario, you would want to have at least, you want to have one tile in the Alliance style that is, that is just there, you know, 24 seven gathering while you have the rest of your marches to do other things. And then when you are not on the game, maybe when you're going to bed or going to sleep, then you send your marches out and then they can gather while you're busy doing other things offline. Finally, you want to look at optimizing the gathering gear for your generals. Now we have talked about the champion's gear. We have talked about the king's gear. We've talked about the dragon's gear. When you are at an advanced stage, you really need all three sets of those types of gear. You might be wondering why I'm saying that. Let me show you. Here is a fully geared up Queen Jindiok that I have. You want a combination of king's gear and two pieces of dragon's gear. That will maximize the buffs that you need for your gathering speed. Don't worry about the ring. Rings are not important for gathering generals, so that's why it's left out there. This is the kind of setup that you want. Why is gathering speed so important? Particularly since you're gonna be focusing on the Alliance tile at this point. Up until now, we've been sort of trained to think of gathering speed as, I'm sending out troops to a tile, Increasing my gathering speed is going to mean that I will be able to finish the tile quicker. And yes, that is true. But for the Alliance tile, which is so big and one person couldn't possibly finish it anyway, increasing your gathering speed means that you're able to gather more resources within that one, that 24 hour period of time. So you might be wondering, how exactly are you going to combine multiple sets of gear for your gathering general in practice? Like literally, how would it work? Okay, I get the king's gear, I get the dragon's gear, but then how exactly do I use it? Okay, I'll give you an example. We have the queen jindy up there that is geared up for all gathering. So let's go and try and find the tile okay i'll just port over here for example and remember when you're sending out troops together first thing check your horn next thing check your crystal 
set the crystal for all gathering speed. That's good. Then check your buffs. Okay, gathering buff is still on. That's great. We come to the tile, check the general, make sure that the general is geared up fully for maximum gathering speed. This is awesome. All right, set the troops. Troops are set. Send. The troops are in the tile now. The only thing that can affect is the gathering buff, so you don't need to worry about that. All you need to do is make sure that before the tile finishes gathering, you come down, find the general, and then switch the gear out. So I'm going to switch to all champions gear. And that's it. At this point, you just leave the troops in there for them to gather, and that's fine. Basically, this is what you need to do if you want to both maximize speed and maximize the amount of resources that you get pulled out. Obviously, when we're talking about the Alliance tile, because the Champion's Gear buff doesn't work for the Alliance tile, so you don't need to worry about that. All you need to do, just send the general in with the full dragon and king's gear set up into the alliance style. And once they're in there, you can just leave it there. No need for you to change, change the gear out. Finally, when it comes to optimizing your general's gear, if you have the luxury to do so, you want to look at refining the gear for your generals. The focus of your refining will be limited to your weapon, your helmet, and the leg armor. Those are the only three pieces of gear that will give you refines for gathering speed. You want to focus your refines on those only. My recommendation would be you focus, you also focus your refines only on the king's gear. But that is purely from an economy point of view, because refining dragon gear is much more expensive. But if you have the ability to do so, then you can also refine the dragon gear as well, if it falls into those categories. And you want to make sure that your refines match the native gathering speed boost on the gear. So, for example, this setup is set up for or gathering speed. You can see I did a few refines there, nothing too great. You want to make sure that if you are refining the gear, it's all all gathering speed for the pieces. All gathering speed, all gathering speed, all gathering speed. That is the kind of thing that you want to look at. That would significantly boost your gathering ability so that when you send that general fully geared up to the Alliance style, the speed at which you're going to be pulling those resources back will significantly transform your gathering game. Right. Now that we've gotten all of that out of the way, music, please. Congratulations. You are now officially graduates of the Red Avenue School of Gathering. I am so proud of the fine set of people that we have here in this class of You now have all the tools and knowledge that you need to go out there and gather all the food, wood, stone, and ore that your capacity can possibly allow you to. The sky is not the limit for you anymore. The only thing that could possibly limit you is your march size and your troop counts and your troop buffs. You know what? Forget about that. Okay, go, go out the door and gather as much as you possibly can. And by the way, I left a tree of lights on the table by the door, so be sure to pick one up on your way out. Thank you, and Aka signing out.